Hello, welcome to another video. I have a differentiation problem here and I have, I'm going to find the second derivative of the function. The first time I ever solved this problem, I was helping a student out and the student came back and said, Sir, your answer was wrong. And I was befuddled and I said, what did I do wrong? So I did it again and got the same answer and my answer was still wrong until I looked closely and I saw what I didn't do. So you want to pay attention to problems like this, especially when the right hand side is just a simple constant. Sometimes that's the only thing you need to adjust. So let me show you what I did the first time and I'm going to show you what I didn't do and I'm going to show you what I did the third time when I got the answer. Let's get into the video. So the first thing we do is the basic thing we would normally do, which is we just say, okay, we're going to differentiate this implicitly, which means I'm going to differentiate x to the sixth. It's going to be six x to the fifth. I'm going to differentiate this implicitly. It's going to be six y to the fifth multiplied by y prime. And I'm going to differentiate the right hand side. It's going to give me zero. So now I know that six y to the fifth y prime will be negative 6x to the fifth. I'm going to divide both sides by this. So I have y prime is equal to negative 6x to the fifth divided by 6y to the fifth. So looks like y prime is basically what? Divide 6x, six, six, it's negative x to the fifth over y to the fifth. And so that's the first step. Well, everybody should be able to do that. But the next thing that you need to do is differentiate this one more time. So we have two options. It's either I use the quotient rule since this is a quotient or I can rewrite this as a product. See, I could actually write this as negative x to the fifth, y to the negative five. So you could either have this or have this, use the product rule or do it this way, use the quotient rule. Whichever way you do it, you should get the same answer. So um, just for simplicity's sake, it's always better for you to use the quotient rule because this can get messy sometimes. So let's say we take the second derivative, y squared. I mean, y, the second derivative of y, y prime prime. So we're going to have the minus sign. I usually would just leave the minus sign out and then begin my differentiation on the inside. So remember the quotient rule formula says that it is the denominator multiplied by the derivative of the numerator. So my answer is going to be y to the fifth multiplied by the derivative of the top, which is going to be 5x to the fourth. Nice. Minus the top x to the fifth multiplied by the derivative of the bottom, which is going to be 5y to the fourth times y prime. Don't forget, okay? You have to multiply by y prime when you differentiate y implicitly. That is, we're differentiating with respect to x. And then you have y to the fifth squared. So we're going to have y to the fifth squared. I just applied the quotient rule. Let's clean this up. This is going to be minus. I'm going to get 5x to the fourth, y to the fifth, minus x to the fifth oh there's a five okay five x to the fifth y to the fourth times but we know that y prime from here is negative x to the fifth over y to the fifth so i'm going to write that so this is going to be negative x to the fifth over y to the fifth okay everything divided by y to the tenth Okay, now at this point, I would like to eliminate this y to the fifth because it's a fraction within a fraction. My strategy is always to multiply, but whatever the denominator is, just multiply everything by it. Sometimes you could see how to cancel out, but for me, it's the fastest way to get rid of a fraction within a fraction. Multiply every term in this expression by that denominator. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to multiply this by y to the fifth, multiply this by y to the fifth, 
multiply this by y to the fifth and see what I'm going to get. I'm going to pull out this negative, this five here. Okay. So if I pull out the five, I still have my negative outside. I pull out a five. What I have left inside is going to be x to the fourth times y to the fifth times y to the fifth again. So it's going to be x to the fourth y to the tenth. Now this minus will multiply this minus. So I'm going to have plus. What do I have there? I'm going to have x to the fifth. Now this is gone because I multiplied it. No, it's going to be x to the tenth. Let's go. It's going to be x to the tenth. And then I have y to the fourth remaining. Everything divided by y to the fifteenth. Nice. Um, yeah, I need to reduce this also. At least this one I can eliminate. So I can write this as this is equal to negative 5 times. So let's see. Um, let's factor out y to the fourth because y to the fourth is actually, oh, I can factor out x to the fourth and y to the fourth. Okay, so we have x to the fourth. I have y to the fourth divided by y to the fifteenth. And what is left on the inside will be equal to, if I factor out y to the fourth, it's going to be y to the sixth plus x to the sixth. Did you see that? Now, this was what I didn't do the first time. I didn't factor because I didn't think there was anything necessary to factor. And that's why the answer was incorrect. So if I had stopped here, maybe eliminated some of the y's and left the answer as x to the fourth. I'm sure the answer that I got the first time was a little bit different. Okay. I reduced this by y to the fourth. So I got y to the 11th under x to the sixth. And there was no y here. And I said, okay, there's no way out. But this clearly shows us that you could take care of this. Now, what is y to the sixth plus x to the sixth? That's the question. It's one. So the next line is actually negative five times. If I simplify this, y to the fourth cancels four of this. So I'm going to have x to the fourth divided by y to the 11 multiplied by the sum of these two is basically one. So as you can see, the answer to this problem is equal to negative five X to the fourth divided by Y to the 11th. This is Y double prime. And this is what the book said is correct. But this was what I got the first time or something similar to this. I just failed to replace this expression with one. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.